from the small village of Ewin, from the community of Palo Seco, from the twin island of Trinidad and Tobago, a small library operation was birthed in 1991 at a humble open Bible church. Now blossoming as a business and ministry network across 40 nations, Anointing Oil Dynamics Limited is a hub of influence of leaders and Christian workers as the name, ministry and work of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is promoted. Anointing Oil Dynamics brings unique training packages to many, online manuals, a base of Christian films, Hebraic and Christian products from the land of Israel and assist in the returning of Jews back home. Thank you for selecting this product. Please visit us at www.anointingoildynamics.com or email us at anointingoildynamics at yahoo.com. We trust that the love of God will be shared in your hearts through this presentation as we use the eye gate to motivate. Mom loved that thing. I know she'd love for you to have it. Sorry, Tim. I'm gonna have to report this. Did you know that 74% of employees steal from their employers? Come on, Ben. What's going on here? You know me. So I'm fired. You're going to jail. Can you open the door? Do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to? See? She's not here. She's in some kind of trouble. No, she isn't in any kind of trouble. Her father is. She'll be in our custody until we can find a foster home for her. Thank you for the money, but God watches over me. You gave her money? Mr. Strickland, my name is Miss Ward. How's my daughter? She's... So you guys lost her. You don't have any idea what you're doing, do you? Why do you live in the storage unit? My dad's in some kind of trouble. And they want to put me in a foster home. But they can't catch me. I think you're getting a little too attached to this case. It's not a case, Ray. It's a person. But, what kind of name is that? Think she set me up, Footman? You live here? Shh, we gotta keep quiet. What if I told you that miracles can happen? Say so you're full of it. What's that? I found it in my mom's things, but basically this is how it works. You write a note to God, you put it on the ceiling, and then in the night he takes it. In time, all your problems get worked out. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Well, it's true. Just remember, she's very resourceful. Tim, I'm gonna find Dad, do you think that there's just one perfect person out there that we're supposed to find and marry? How much is that one? It's a brilliant choice. Would you like to see it? Maybe he's gonna pop the question. You have to tell me all the juicy details. I thought we had a date. Them? They're just college buds. They won't be in town long. Why does this keep happening to me? First Bryce, then Stuart. Well, sounds like the Lord kept you from a big disaster. <laughs> I'm beginning to think he doesn't even want me to get married. If you're ever gonna nab a hot guy, you need to get a new wardrobe. Any past relationships? I feel like my heart's been passed around like a football. Fathers give their daughters in marriage. So what are you saying? Who am I gonna give our daughter to? Most young men today have no clue what it means to be a man. I'm looking for a friend of mine. Do you know him? What are you doing here? Uh, were you expecting someone else? I've stood behind that counter and watched people fall in love over coffee. It can happen anywhere, anytime. If you're looking for Drew, he might be down by the bar. Thanks. Ah. I think you're amazing. This young lady is looking for Clint. Hello, stranger. 
I'm really sorry. I didn't want Grace to get a surprise like this. Just go away and leave me alone. Who you marry is a decision you're going to have to make yourself. But I'm here to, to help you. To guide you. If you'll trust me. I will pray. O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, please give me success today. Behold, here I stand by the well of water, and the young women of the town are coming out to draw water. And this is my request. I will ask one of them, please give me a drink from your jug. If she says yes, have a drink, and I will water your camels too, then let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. This is how I will know that you have shown unfailing love to my master. Please, give me a little drink of water from your jug. Yes, my lord. Have a drink. I will draw water for your camels, too, until they have had enough to drink. It looks like God answered your prayer, Eliezer. If she is of Abraham's tribe, we shall soon know. Thank you for your kindness. Please accept these gifts. <gasps> Whose daughter are you? And please tell me, would your father have any room to put us up for the night? I am the daughter of Bethuel. My grandparents are Nahor and Milka. We have plenty of straw and feet for the camels, and we have room for guests. The Lord has shown unfailing love and faithfulness to my master for he has led me straight to my master's relatives. walking through the fields to meet us. It is my master. Well, I guess we'll know soon enough if she's the right one. I already know.
world. It is real. And this place is all there is. There is no sky. No sun. No Narnia. No asthma. Don't remember much, miss. Try to stop your love, and you would wage war. Try to take the very thing you gave your life for, and you would come running, tear down every wall. All the while you're shouting, my love.
before I created the heavens and the earth, I was. When the earth and everything in it passes away, I will be. I hold the universe together from the smallest atom to the greatest galaxy. It all is in my hands. The sun is hidden in my shadow. I have set the earth on its foundations and I rest my feet upon it. I stir the waters of the oceans with my fingers and shake the mountains with my breath. I am entirely holy and completely other. There are none before me and none like me who can question what I have done or what I will do. My kingdom is eternal and shall exist forevermore. I am the ruler over the kings of the earth. I am the prince of peace. I am the king of kings, the righteous king, the king of the Jews, the king of glory, the king of the ages, the king of heaven, and I am the Lord of lords. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am Jehovah Jireh, I will provide. I am Jehovah Rapha, I will heal. I am Jehovah Mekadesh, I will sanctify. I am Jehovah Rohi, I am your shepherd. I am the Most High God, your deliverer, your redeemer and savior. I am your shield and your strength and your defender, the eternal and everlasting God. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Before me, there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there's no Savior. Beside me there's no God. Angels and heavenly beings worship me upon my throne, and I will not give my glory unto another. I will not share my creation. I am a jealous God, and a consuming fire. I am the commander of the heaven's armies, and before me kingdoms crumble and rulers kneel. I am your harbor in the tempest. I am safety for the tempted and tried. I have come to set the captives free, to strengthen the weak, to heal the lame, to cause the blind to see. I have come to give you life and breath to breathe. I have come that you might know me. I have come that you might know my limitless love and endless goodness, my measureless mercy and never-ending grace. My forgiveness knows no boundaries, and my acceptance sees no imperfections, nor color, nor race, nor wealth, nor poverty. In me you are made clean, and through me you are sanctified. I am indescribable, incomprehensible, irresistible, and invincible. The heavens cannot contain my glory, death cannot consume me, life cannot outlast me. All knees will bow before me, and at my name every tongue will confess. Every tongue will confess that I am the great I am. Every tongue will confess that I am the God of gods. shed that set us free. Each and every one of us can testify of the saving power of the living Christ when you brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. When you pull us out from the miry clay and set our feet on the rock, the rock of Christ, where everything else is shaking in our world, in our life, in our community, in our nation. You remain firm foundation. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that continues to forever speak to us. Now, Lord, as we get into your word, we pray that you'll once again open our hearts, open our minds, and write upon the fleshly 
nature of our hearts. You engrafted word. And cause us to understand as your word declared, thy word have I hid in my heart. We pray for a fresh download of a revelation from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Well, a pleasant good morning to each and every one of you. I'm officially uh, speaking to you for the first time this year. And we thank God for what He's doing. So I want to just take a few moments before and just give you some updates and some things that I suspect or I review that's happening or will happen or will come to take place uh, for 2018 as we get into this year. You know, the last couple of days we have had some trimmers over Trinidad and I understand last night we had nine and we need to continue to uh, pray and keep our nation in, uh, um, in prayer. On January 31st of this year, next slide please, uh, which will be on Wednesday, there is going to be an event in the heavens. One event that is going to be taking place, which is for the very first time in 150 years, we are going to be having a blood moon that happens with a super moon that is also going to be a blue moon, all climaxing on the same night. Now, uh, this is unique in a way to start our year. And uh, a blue moon is really when you have um, two moons or two full moon in the same month. Next slide, please. And we had one on January the 1st. There was one on December the 3rd and January the 1st. And now we are having again on January the 31st. So the second full moon in any month is called a blue moon. You have heard this statement once in a blue moon. That doesn't mean that the moon is going to become blue. But it will remain a normal moon. It's just the technical term that is used. So it's a full moon, but it's also a super moon. In the sense that it's going to be one of the closest time it will be to it. And on Wednesday night, it will be 14% bigger and 30% brighter than a regular moon. And um, then it's going to be an eclipse as well. And that eclipse is going to, of course, get the moon into an orange-reddish um, color that is there. So very interesting um, that we will be having all of these signs happening in one night of a blue moon, a super moon, and a blood moon, and a full moon all in one night. So I hope you'll be moving. So that's why you see a comrade. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 19. I want to show you this passage of scripture. Because on the 31st of January, which is um, the same night of the eclipse, the nation of Israel is having or the start of a very, the, the start of a, one of their major feasts. Uh, called the Feast of uh, Shavuot, and it's really the celebration of trees. And it's actually tied to Deuteronomy 20, 19, where the Lord instructed the nation. It says, When thou shalt besiege a city a long time, and make war against it to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of the tree, and thou shalt not cut them down. For the tree of the field is man's life. Everybody say the tree of the field is man's life. So it is on this premise that they actually celebrate uh, the, the, uh, the trees or the celebration of trees. In particular this year is really the celebration of the fig tree. And of course we know the nation of Israel is connected to the fig tree. So on the day of the Jewish celebration, we now have marked in the heavens... A super moon, a blood moon, and an eclipse in a full moon. And I understand also this week there is also going to be an asteroid that's going to pass through the heavens as well. All falling in alignment with the celebration of the trees or the celebration of man's life. Are you there with me? This actually led me to go and do a research or check something. And I just wanted just the two slides on this. And uh, because we're in the year 2018... And because they start their year this year with the celebration of tree, which is man's life, I went and I did a check into the number 18, only to discover that the number 18 is connected to life. Next slide. In the Hebrew system of the numerical value for the words, 
The Hebrew word for life, which is chai, has the value of 18. This makes 18 a favorable number as it indicates hope for a long life. Tell your neighbor in 2018, it's a year of favor, hope for long life. Are you there with me? Now, uh, Chai is made up of two Hebrew letters, Yod, which is 10, and here which is 8. And you'll actually see people use this jewelry as well. And you may think this is a head of an animal. It's not. It's the two letters that are there that connects uh, to bring in what the word um, 18 means in terms of life or Chai. All right? So if you want to name somebody this year, Chai is a good name. <laughs> I said, oh yes, there's a T. That must be the tea of life. <laughs> now, in scripture, the two longest names in the Bible, if you want a name for a child this year, Psalms 56, 18 letters, Isaiah 8, and who's one? Don't ask me to pronounce it, I'm going to try. <laughs> 18 letters. During the time of the judges in Israel, there were 18 judges that run their course in their influence over the nation of Israel. People like Samson and Deborah and Gideon and so on like that. There were a total of 18 judges. Again, because why? 18 is connected to life. 18 is connected to favor. Are you there with me? In the ancient world, they will normally measure, you know, we use feet and inches. Back then, they used to use cupids, and a cubit was actually 18 inches. You'll find this in the dimensions of Noah's Ark, and the dimensions of different things and so on like that. When you're 18, you're marriage ready. Anybody told 18? And he's the only person that actually refers to it. In Luke chapter 13 and verse 3, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Verse 4 says, of those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? See, here's what happened. There was a freak accident where a tower fell on 18 people. And Jesus is using the illustration to say, not because you have a freak accident happened to some people, you feel their sin is higher than your sin. So he was using that analogy. But in the same chapter, in verse 11, we find 18 again. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. You see, after 18 years, she gained new life, favor, and long life. Are you there with me? And was bowed down and could in no wise lift herself up. And of course, Jesus restored her, and then the people had a problem because he did it on the Sabbath day. And in verse 16, he says, And ought not this one, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from her bonds on the Sabbath day. So the number 18 actually occurs 26 times throughout your Bible. Three of them is in the New Testament. Psalms 110 verse 1 has 18 New Testament references. And this is, of course, the statement that Jesus will have referred many times to as well, where he says, um, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at thy right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. All right? So... You may also have that um, reoccurring. And there are quite a few others as well in terms of the number. So I just wanted to bring this out as we start the year 2018. In spite of what we are hearing and seeing that is there. It is a year of good life, new life, abundant life. We have eternal life. It is a time of great life. Are you there with me? Favor, hope. That's 2018. And even in the Hebraic world, it is connected uh, to the uh, celebration of trees. And it's, uh, the, the heavens are going to mark that this coming week. Good. So that's a bonus for you. Praise the Lord. Today I want to share along the lines. I haven't done a character study in a while. And I want to talk about the records of remarkable Rebecca. The records of remarkable Rebecca. Genesis chapter 25, reading from verse 26. And after that, they came his brother out, and his hands took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bared them. And the boys grew, 
And Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a plain man. Everybody say plain man. Dwelling in tents. And when her days to be delivered was fulfilled, behold, there were twins in a womb. And the first came out red, not like me, huh? all over like a hairy garment. And they call his name Esau. Verse 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hands took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bared them. Chapter 27, reading from verse 21. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he, and he felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. The life, the role, and the testimony of the patriarch Rebecca is one of the most valuable life that changed the impact of all humanity. Her name is mentioned 30 times in the book of Genesis only, and once in Romans, as his contribution, as her contribution, sets the platform for the nation of Israel, the coming Messiah, and the outreach to all Gentiles would have the opportunity for redemption. Her beauty, servant attitude, and willing to be used by God can be seen from the very introduction of her life when Abraham's servant arrived in her world. Remarkable Rebecca was beautiful, friendly, outgoing, unselfish, and energetic as she reached out to her family and visitors resulting in her promotion and marriage to Abraham's son as she learned to rely on the resources of the biblical God. The married couple of Isaac and Rebekah is the only one within the patriarchs that stand out as a one-man, one-woman relationship with friendship and loyalty. Unlike the generation before them, with the marriage of Abraham and Sarah, we remember that we had the issues of Hagar. And then later, after the death of Sarah, Abraham also went and got married to another individual in Genesis 25 and verse 1. Resulting in strained relationships and heartbreaks. There was much conflict with the generations after Rebekah in the marriage of Jacob and his four wives such as the jealousy resulting in the enslavement of Joseph between the half-brothers and each brother. Remarkable Rebecca had an encounter with God, had a word from God, and is determined at all costs to see the fulfillment of the plan of God. The role and influence of Rebecca proves to be one of the most important Important marriage in human history as her life lays the foundation for the nations that will proceed from Esau and the legacy of Israel. Her influence on a family coupled with the divine promises of the God of Abraham puts her in a prime position for influence and nurturing. Come with me as we open the, re the records of remarkable Rebecca who relied on the revelations to rectify her world with which she was not re recognized regardless of her recipe for success in her relatives' lives. This morning, we are going to explore the records of remarkable Rebecca. First area that I want to deal with this morning is what I call Rating the response of Rebecca. Rating the response of Rebecca. In Genesis 24, we pick up in verse 14. And let it come to pass. This is, of course, the servant of Abraham who is sent out on a mission or a commission 
Does Abraham recognize the mantle and the promise of God in his life? And he has his son, his only son, or his only begotten son from his legal marriage that requires the promises of God to flow through. And this servant goes on a mission. And he prays. And let it come to pass that the damsel of whom I shall say, let down thy picture, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she said, drink. And I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my servant. Verse 15 declares, and it came to pass before he had done speaking. How many of you all know when you're in the will of God, in the plan of God, in the move of God, sometimes while you are making a declaration in your tongue, God begins to move. Are you there with me? Where before he was done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born of Bethuel, the son of Micah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her picture on her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well to fill her picture and came up. In verse 17, we read, And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy picture. And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she hasted and let down her picture upon her hand and gave him drink. In verse 19, we find, And when she had done giving him drink, now understand he had prayed that he will ask, but he had told the Lord, apart from him drinking, he wanted to see the initiative of her going the extra mile to also feed the camels. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. Now, if a camel traveled over an extensive or a very long time, a camel, one camel can drink almost... Um, Three barrels of water. One camel. And if you go back in the chapter, you will see, and I'll show it to you a little later, this guy was moving with ten camels. So you talking, you have a little thing about the size of a bucket, and you had to bail out ten barrels of water to feed or to, or to give these camels drink. Verse 20 says, And she hastened and emptied a picture into the trough. And ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to it whether the Lord has made his journey prosperous or not. Sometimes in life we are given the opportunity to serve others. And our response or our attitude or the distance that we go can actually open doors for us or not. Sometimes we have no idea who might be the person that is receiving or the authority that they carry. And our attitude can actually change it or not. Mind you, I must also say that this girl is brave because in this generation, sometimes we, 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 we are cautious whenever we have to help a stranger. Because we never know who might have ulterior motives or intentions. Andrew Fuller says, The fall of those that have gone before us are like the many rocks on which others have been split. The records of them is like placing buoys over them for, the, for securing the future, security of future marines. In other words, then, when you look at what might have happened before, you can use those things to step on so that you don't make the same errors of others. Are you there with me? Rebecca's best qualities come out in the simple yet heartwarming narrative describing her response to Eliezer's reproach in her service to him and in her willingness to believe and act upon all that he had told her. After her dedicated service, he then reveals who he is. 
George Madison in his remarks indicated in, in looking at Rebecca's qualities and expressions, he indicated that she is a fine-mannered, remarkable tact, a sunbeam to her household, a very beautiful young woman with gifts of physical charm, which, can, which was apt to produce self-consciousness, a gift of intellectual sympathy. Modest and meek, frank and open, ready Kindness, great energy and faith, graciousness matched her physical charm, describes remarkable Rebecca. When she became a mother, she revealed how masterful and clever she could have been. A direct contrast to her husband Isaac, who was probably more simple, slow to wits, a mild and mannered than his wife. In the lines of would, 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 as expressed Isaac's feeling, when uh, for the first time he gazed upon the lovely Rebecca and came to experience her comforting love as she filled the empty place in his heart because of his mother's death. What an impact that is there. As a sociable and loving girl, as the name suggests, she was industrious, and although she was a member of a family of standing, she was not afraid to soil her hands. Sometimes, you know, you feel when you dress up and you know, spend all the time on your fingernails and on your creams and all the things like that, you, you may neglect to do the simple work when the opportunity arises. The hard work of drawing and carrying water. The provision she made for Eliezer's camel and the meal she prepared speak of Rebecca as one who did not shun domestic duties. Now I sure because women will come out to draw water in that culture in the heat of the day. To tot or to transport or to pour about 30 barrels of water definitely will have led to a good sweat. She guess she woke out. Years ago, when I was at the at my home of origin, mornings before you go to school, you have to go to the standpipe and bring water home. Yeah. And then when you return from school, that's the first thing you have to do again. So I understand to some degree. I'm sure I didn't do 30 barrels in a day. <laughs> this damsel was a combination of show horse as well as work horse. She was not pretty and packed up. But rather, it was a case of beauty coupled with brilliance. You know, sometimes they have these car shows. And they have all the fancy lights and the nice paint job. And, but all the good is for show. When the show finishes, you pack them up. And God doesn't just call us to be on show. We must also be able to do and to make impact as well. So you don't just want to be a show horse, neither do you only you just want to be a work horse world. There must be a combination of both in terms of the beauty coupled with brilliance. This brings me to the second area as I examine the romantic reverberations of Rebecca. <laughs> if I some Mark impressed with English, that's great. <laughs> Genesis 24 is regarded by the experts to be the sweetest chapter ever, ever written in all of Bible. Now I use this before I define Sarah. I say, Lord, you see that response and that woman? I want to see who could come up with that statement. Marrying sight unseen is the most dangerous venture. But in this case, it was successful because the angel of the Lord had directed the events leading up to the union. Now remember back then you had no Facebook and send me a WhatsApp picture what the girl looked like and so on like that. Huh? You have a man who is the very first time you see them come with this long story 
And of course, he come with all of the jewelry and so. But she have no idea what this guy looks like. One, she have no idea of his culture, his history, his growing up, his attitude, his his um, his behavior. If he have a bad breath, if he have a saying, you know, I no idea. This was our kid. This wasn't just love at first sight. This was love at no sight. Sight on scene. 2449 Genesis. And now if he have dealt kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me. And I will turn to the right or to the left. Now, of course, this is after um, Abraham's servant tells the whole story of what Abraham did and how he prayed and how Rebecca came and responded and served not only him but all the camels. And then when he revealed who he is, he realized that the Lord had led him to the, to, 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 um, the relatives of Abraham. So in his view, he was of, he, he, what he prayed for happened. What he prayed for was answered. But still, he needed to get confirmation. From the family that have to make decision. Then Laman and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceed from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. So when the family heard of the report, when the family heard of the testimony, when the family heard of the mission that the Lord, they can't say good or bad. In other words, then they can also verify that, um, that this thing proceed from the Lord. And in verse 51, she, they said, Behold, Rebecca is before thee. Take her and go. And let her be thy master's son wife as the Lord had spoken. Look even at the response of the family. A man turn up, come for your daughter. I have three of them. You'll be like this, laying thing go just out. The Lord tell me. There are plenty of people going around, but let the Lord tell me, you know. Them fellas, this couple were brave. But of course, when the Lord leads, the Lord also puts an evidence, puts a testimony in your heart too as well. After the testimony, the remarkable response of Rebecca to a stranger, her parents sees the direction of the Lord in their life and family. In verse 55, next slide. And her brother and her mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days. What, what, what's going on? You now say, take the girl and go. All of a sudden now, family had a discussion, they come back. Let her abide a few days, at least 10. Now 10 is critical. The 10 is the number of proving. They want to prove. They want to verify. That's why you have 10 toes. That's why you have 10 fingers. You can prove things. That's why there are 10 plagues in Egypt. It's a test them to prove them. That's why there are 10 commandments. It's a test to prove. That's why you are given uh, to pay tithes. Because prove God and see. Prove. 10 days. After that, she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing that the Lord had prospered my way. The man on the girl. Don't hold me back. <laughs> the Lord opened me where you tell me about wait. Hinder me not, seeing that the Lord had prospered my way. Send me away that I might go to my master. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. Now, this is powerful. Because at the end of the day, family could say this and family could say that. She had to leave with the man. It is her life. And at the end of the day, she had to make the final decision. And that's why when we're doing the wedding and so on, we get the individual couples to say. We don't have the family say. And they called me back, Rebecca, and said unto her, Wit thou, wit thou go with this man. And she said three words. I will Go. Get ready. All you need are the girl to turn water home. <laughs> A man turn up, she must go. <laughs> While her family of origin may have their recommendation. Rebecca is called to make the final decision in light of the, of the present offer. Her fate, her future, her entire life that is yet to come sits on three words. I will go. 
Now, verse 60 for me is mind-blowing. This is actually what, this is a verse that actually got me stirred, in, stirred up in researching um, the life of Rebecca. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, be thou our, be thou art, sorry, our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gates of those that hate them. Now watch this. One will put a thousand to flight, as your Bible tells you. Well, two will put ten thousand. Your Bible tells you that two cannot walk except they be agreed. Are you there with me? But the only way that two could put 10,000 to fight or to flight is if individually you could beat your thousand. Because if my wife could fight the thousand and I can't fight, when we join that time, she have to be able, she have to know, defend me as well. Look at the blessing or the declaration or the prophecy on Rebecca's life. It matches the Abrahamic blessing that has been transferred to Isaac. Are you there with me? Now, in, 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 the, in the bright light of all of Scripture, all of the weight is always seen on, on Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Nobody sees the prophecy on Rebecca's life. Nobody. Rebecca has a promise from God that she will be the mother of thousands of millions and that her seed will possess the gates of them that hate her. Are you there with me? So while there is an anointing upon Isaac's life because of the encounter that Abraham had, here you have a woman in a faraway land that has an equal match authority that can now be able to come and match with what is there. In the business world, you always hear that the, 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 the rich has always married the rich. So when money meet money, you make more money. That's why you have macho money. Oh, yes. Here you have macho anointing or macho mantle. There is a mantle on her life that matches. Now, I want to also say this too as well. Rebecca had a remarkable declaration that matched the prophecy and high calling of God on Abraham's life, now transferred to the patriarch Isaac. Her prophetic mantle is the only place in all of Scripture where the blessing is connected to millions. The Bible does not use the word millions nowhere. Except here. You will not find the word millions in all of the Bible. You'll have thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, but you'll not have the word millions. Rebecca is traveling with a unique anointing that nobody else carries in that she's connected to a blessing of millions. Are you there with me? Now, in verse 10, I want to just back up this to show you one thing. Genesis 24, 10. And the servant, this is when he's now leaving Abraham, he took 10 camels of the camels of his master. That's all I want to show you. Okay, he's traveling with 10 camels, and that's why she'll feed 10. That's where I get the entire concept of 10 from. In verse 61, Rebekah arose and her damsel, and they rode upon camels and followed the man, and the servants took Rebekah and went their way. Watch this. If you do a research on camels, you will find that camels always, uh, blessings always travel on camels. The wise men came to see Jesus on camels and they brought wealth and perfumes and gold. Then it's the number, like I said, to prove. She is coming to meet her future husband as a proven woman. The number 10 is connected to being proved. Proven woman. In verse 63, and Isaac went out to meditate in the fields at the evening tide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lightened off the camel. 
The romantic reverberations of remarkable Rebecca reaches its meeting point in the field in the evening time. It is set within the backdrop of the evening sunset. What a meeting. <laughs> now, I want for you to just, I want to just ponder where the meeting place is. He is in the fields. That means he's working. He is in the fields meditating. He is in the fields engaged in the work of the Lord. He is engaged in his father's work. And while he's involved doing the work that he's supposed to be doing, God is making arrangements to bring blessings upon Tamil that will meet him in the fields that is there. While you're waiting, do something and the blessings will run you down. Evening time, sunset, like God walking in the cool of the day in Eden as Christ is on the cross in the evening, making a way for man to meet God. The power of the evening is to start a new thing. That's why it says an evening and morning. Is it evening and morning? Something new is about to start. He is about to start a brand new life because of his involvement. In the evening place. In his father's business. Verse 67 declares. And Isaac brought her into. His mother's Sarah's tent. And took Rebecca. And called, and she became his wife. And he loved her. And Isaac was comforted. After his mother's death. Chapter 26 verse 7. I want to show one more element. Of the romantic reverberations of Rebecca. He took his family down uh, because of a famine in Egypt. And the men of that place asked him of his wife. And she said, and he said, sorry, she is my sister. For he feared to say she is my wife. Lise said he, the men of that place will kill me for Rebecca because she was very fair to look upon. The woman had beauty that could kill, that could frighten you. And of course, well, he's scared for his life. Mind you, his father said the same thing. Yeah? Now he's coming and doing the same thing. Family cultures as travel. And he's, he's, he's actually running along the same lines of what he's doing. But in verse 8, we find something interesting in, in chapter 26. And it came to pass that when he had been there a long time, see, when he had run a long time, people could tell, because then your life starts to show. He was there a long time. And Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out his window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. This is the first time in all of Bible that the word sporting is used, and it's not, yes, it's connected to games, but it's not cricket and football and things like that. But it's but he's gaming. Yeah. It's the first time the man watching. The way the man playing with that girl, that can't be, sister. <laughs> Crazy, you man. But I could be a sister, man. <laughs> there is public playing, laughter, the guy that laughed. That's not just a group laugh. And romantic, outright behavior drew the attention of his neighbors and the political leaders. Around him. Hey, Parliament started to talk about this foreigner because of his behavior, attitude. Their relationship was not only as secret lovers, but when you are doing the right thing, there is no need to keep it quiet. We have plenty of people doing the wrong thing, living the wrong thing, they want to broadcast it all over the place. If you know that you're living right and the that man is your man, and you're sure you want to everything is your man, you are free to be able to behave how you're supposed to behave. Because you have the legal authority and right to do that. The man was sporting, his games going on so. The girl light up the man life. Light up the man life. The relevance 
of revealed revelation. She wasn't just within the home. She also had an encounter with God. In 2521, there is a problem. She can't have children. She's barren. It had traveled through the family line before. But Isaac knew of his history. And when his father had this problem, they went and get deputy. And he see what that caused. It's not everything coming through your family line, you must allow it to come here, something you have to change it. He decided to change it. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Now, in, in, in Abraham's case, when they, when they recognized what was going on, he listened to Sarah. The man was hearing from God, but he still listened to a wrong recommendation. This boy learned. And he went and asked the Lord. And I'm sure if Abraham had done the same thing, you would not have had the Hagar issue. Now, in verse 22, and the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went and inquired of the Lord. Now, here is interesting. She see that to get an answer, her husband went to the Lord. Now, understand, this is not, this, she did not grow up in the home of Abraham, so she didn't know the God of Abraham in her upgrowing. Are you there with me? So she come from another thing, and now she's in we thing. So she's watching we. She sees that he goes to the Lord and get answers. She now have an issue, so what does she do? She's following we. She goes to the Lord, and she inquires of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manners of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. The elder shall serve the younger. The elder shall serve the younger. Now, this is not some recommendation. This is a declaration, a prophetic word that she's getting directly from God as to her role, as to her purpose and as to her destiny in the future. She also had no idea that she got a word from God. And when her days to be delivered was fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Remarkable Rebecca becomes the first person in your Bible to have twins. The culture of polygamy was prominent and this family had seen the backlash Due to the recommendation of his mother, of his own mother. Therefore, the barrenness of Rebekah pushed the patriarch Isaac to rely on God to intervene in Sarah's, in uh, Rebekah's life. Rebekah's struggle in her pregnancy caused her to follow her husband's method to go to the God of Abraham. Her search for answers. Result in a revealed revelation about the future of two nations from her son. Favoritism or not with the boys. The actions of Rebecca has been attacked by many Bible teachers and family researchers as being deceptive. But I want to show a different light. Because she has a word from God that nobody else has. That the elder must serve the younger. Remarkable Rebecca has a word from God. A prophecy on her own life. And now she needs to do all that is needed to connect these divine promises to the promise of Abraham. It is the most important partnership of all time for the future of all of humanity. The battle for the blessings and the future of God's nation comes down to a battle between mama boy and daddy boy. The rings in Rebecca's hands are as follows. These are the things that she has working 
for her. One, in Genesis chapter 24 and verse 16, Rebecca has a prophecy on her own life that she will become the mother of millions. That's the first thing she has in her hand. Secondly, she now has a prophecy from God on her sons that their leadership style will be different and that the elders will serve the younger. The third ring she has, is that the relationship between Esau and Isaac is built on kitchen love. Say, so what is kitchen love? I'll tell you. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his vintage. Because the boy could cook and give it to eat. I love him. Kitchen love. And she could match the kitchen love. So she had that working on her behalf too as well. Because if it's food he wants, you can deal with that one. Four, Jacob had already gotten the rights for the birthright. In 25 verse 33, and Jacob said, swear to me when he's talking to Esau, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him and he sold him his birthright unto Jacob. Five, Rebecca is the first person in the Bible that gave birth to twins. I coined a new word, twinship, because it do exist in the English language. I check. This twinship of the brothers means that Jacob is joined heir to the promises of the firstborn. Are you there with me? In Genesis 25, 26, when they were being birthed, the Bible records that Jacob, his hands took hold on the heel of Esau. He's joined heir. They are twins. Six. Rebecca is missing one thing. Rebecca is missing the garment of the firstborn. The mantle of the firstborn. The clothing of the firstborn. To access the full benefits of the promises of God on Isaac's life from Abraham. The uniform of the firstborn will give the right of access and the office due to the authority invested in the right of the firstborn. Remarkable Rebecca knows her history and understands what is acceptable to God when Adam and Eve fell. In Genesis 3 and verse 21, she recognized that in order to approach and access the blessings of God, they had to be clothed in coats of skin. Are you there with me? Remarkable Rebecca comes in alignment with the prophet that will introduce Jesus to the world. He is clothed in skins of animals. And that's John the Baptist. Linked to the camel that Rebecca's blessing is connected to, we find John the Baptist who introduces Jesus to the world is clothed in camel here. Are you there with me? And camels his blessing. He's connected. He is clothed in the skins of animals. And Rebecca gets an insight, a supernatural revelation that she can fulfill the call of God and the purpose of God in her life. The relevance of remarkable Rebecca's wisdom is seen when she empowers Jacob with her words, her prophecies, her relationship. And she was even willing to become a curse. Because when Jacob said, if my father, if my father find out, I will become a curse. She said, let the cups be upon me, like Christ, becoming a curse from us. She was willing to see that God performs his word. Are you there with me? Rebecca sends Jacob in the clothing and sweet-smelling meal to approach the throne of his father and make the request known. Now it is God's turn to come true. Are you there with me? <laughs> this house chef was bold with his brother Esau when a bowl of soup won him the birthright. Now he must be bold again with a bowl of stew to bring the blessings of Abraham from his family, from his father. The way you call bold face. 
He used a bowl to access the birth ride from Esau. And now we're going with a bowl of stew. Because the only father love we have for Esau is because they could feed him. Kitchen love. Kitchen love. In Genesis chapter 27, from verse 15. And Rebekah took goodly raiments from her elder son. Go on and get the boy garment. She took goodly raiments from her elder son Esau, and that which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goat upon his hands, and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread, which she had prepared in the hands of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? Verse 19. And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy brother. Now let, me ask, let me explain to you what's going on. When somebody comes with the authority of the firstborn, he's operating in the office of the firstborn. He comes in the clothing of of the firstborn, or should I say, the uniform of the firstborn, you are no longer operating as yourself. You are now operating in the office that you're coming with. Are you there with me? So when the father asks him, who are you? Say, I am Esau, man. I say firstborn. I am joint heir. I have the authority of the firstborn. I have the garments of the firstborn. I have the office of the firstborn. I am operating as the firstborn. I am the firstborn. Are you there with me? I am Esau, thy firstborn. No, he's a firstborn too. He's joined hey, his twins. So by right, he has the right to make the declaration. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my vintage, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto him, How is it that thou hast found, thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord... Thy God brought it to me. Well, yes, the Lord brought it to him. True, Rebecca. However, it working, we work in it. <laughs> the relevance of the revealed revelation takes its full course. In verse 21, Isaac said unto Rebecca, Come near, I pray thee that I might feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob came near unto Isaac his father. And he fell on him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice. But the hands, the garment, the uniform, the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy. As his brother Esau hands, so he blessed them. Let me tell you something. When we go before the throne room of God, we don't go in our own rights. We don't go in our own righteousness. We don't go in our own power. We don't go in our own lifestyle. Our works are filthy rags. But when we are clothed with the life of Christ that is here, and the Father smell us, and the Father feel us, and the Father can tell, we avoid something like Shadrach, but are smelling Jesus. Your voice sounded like Shadrach, but I feel in Jesus. I put on the righteousness of the firstborn. I put on the righteousness and the authority of the firstborn. I the office of the firstborn. No matter how I strong it, smell me, feel me, it's me, Jesus. When he asked, Were you in Jacob? Oh, is he so? I see firstborn, and I could access the blessing of God because I am clothed in the authority of the firstborn that is here. Are you there with me? Now, if Rebecca did not have a word from God about it, we will wonder why it is she does such a drastic... It is not favoritism. She has a mantle and a purpose in her life. And if she don't fulfill the role of the elder to serve the younger, every nation and future generations can be affected because the plan of God boils down to goat skin. Verse 24, and he said, Art thou my very son Esau? Yes, it's me. 
Wherefield, a joint heir, and in the office, a come with the food, a come with the comments, a come with the word from God, a come with a mantle. Come, feel me. Feel me, it's me. It's me. Where me A find this so? It's me. Verse 25, and he said, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's vintage that my soul may be, may, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him and he, and he did eat and he bought wine and he did drink. And his father Isaac said to him, come near now and kiss me, my son. You see, when you approach your father, you have to be ready to worship. You could be clothed in what you're clothed with. But you must come near. You must come near. You must stay far. The only come and sit on the back of the church. Come near. Come near. Now, of course, if I, am, I am bashing those that come in the back with your children. Or when you come to the church, full up. I mean, if you come on time and the whole front empty, don't go in the back. Come near. Come near. Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And the father smell our worship. Our worship must be able to go up in the nostrils of the Father. And he smelled, and he smelled of the raiment, and he blessed him. And he said, see, now watch it, the man blind. He blind, we able to see. But when you approach with the authority, and you're clothed in the garment and the office, he says, see, the smell of my son is the smell of the field. You know why? Because the purpose of the father's heart is that we must be in the fields working. You must come out of the field with the scent of the smell, with the scent of the field. We must know for a fact you're engaged. You was rolling with the goat. You was rolling with the sheep. You had the camel here on here. When you're coming for worship, we could smell that you're engaged in souls outside there. You are engaged in the field. See, the man blind, but when he smell, he could see and know for sure that you're engaged in the field. See, see, my son has the scent of the field, which the Lord has blessed. 28 begins to bless him now. Therefore God gave thee the dew of the heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. I know the thing they're doing for carnival, yeah? Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that cursed thee. Now that's the Abrahamic blessing. And bless be he that blessed thee. The relevance of the wisdom faith of remarkable Rebecca is echoed in the hall of faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 20 it declares, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. But he didn't do it by faith. The faith that he's operating on is the faith extended by Rebecca. If Rebecca did not make the move that she did, he would have not been able to fulfill this. Because he had no intention to bless the boy in the first place. But then he didn't get the word. She got the word. And now she has to move to fulfill the plan and the purpose of God in her life. The richness. Bring up the next slide. The richness of remarkable Rebecca is refined in Romans for us to rely to really remember the relevance of a record. Should I one last night to see what I see? Hey, what should I come up with? <laughs> Romans chapter 9. This is the only other place in all of the Bible Rebecca's name is mentioned. It is 30 times in the book of Genesis. And only once outside of Genesis. For this is a word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one. <laughs> Romans takes note that Rebecca only had one man. The scriptures doesn't say that for anybody else in the history of the patriarchs. 
But remarkable Rebecca in her movement to go and find an unseen lover remains with the man till death do us part. And Romans pick it up and say, listen, Rebecca, but Rebecca also had conceived by one, even qualified we was, even our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that call it. It was said unto who? Her. The legacy of her life. It was said unto her, not Isaac, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, verse 13, Jacob has I, have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall I say then? There is unrighteousness with God, God forbid. For he said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. One simple life in the hand of God can impact the world for many centuries. Rebecca's name is mentioned 31 times in the Bible. We are 31 days in most of the months of the year. Take one of these. The richness of remarkable Rebecca is reaching out to us as relevant records regardless of our rags. For this reason, God continues to call us to remember and rely on his resources at the cross through his renowned life on earth as we run the race with restoration. Let's stand, please. What is your family history? What is the call of God upon your life? What are the things that you're willing to do to make a remarkable impact within our world? What about the things that God, we have a word from God that can do something in the nations of the earth, that can do something in the community, that can do something within the framework of God's plan. That can make an impact in the lives of men. Who is Rebecca? When you look at her life, she was one simple individual that was obedient, had the right attitude, willing to serve, and to be used by God. And when armed with a prophecy and a word from God, she was willing to go the extra mile to ensure that the promises of God is fulfilled. Like Abraham's servant that comes to recruit. Similar to as well, we are here this morning. To call someone and say, are you willing to serve? Not just to serve one individual, but even to go the extra mile. To do something more. To do beyond what you are asked to do. Many times in the work environment, I come across individuals and we tell them to do additional days. Well, that's not part of my job portfolio. I ain't going to pay for that. That's not our standard. That's why sometimes only when they look at the fire, you use one of the first on the list. Because you're not willing to do the extra. Father, we give you thanks and praise in the house even now. We thank you, O Lord, for the records of heroes of the scriptures. So that these things are written for our admonition. And that we have a testimony, O Lord, that we are able to rely on and that you can use the simple things in our lives to make an impact. Take our lives even now. And Lord, in spite of our background and differences in family, O oh Lord, we will be willing to go and to inquire of the Lord and ask, why is this happening to me? And to get a word from you and to see it fulfilled. 
pray for now for each and every person that is here who might have heard something from God in the past and you just leave it dormant but God stir it up again but I also want to make a call this morning while I pray God is looking for people to come and follow him will you be willing to leave all that you already have and it boils down now to you we will call the damsel and ask her, what is your response? She said, I will go. She had no idea where she was going, who she was going and meet, what her life was going to be like. She just had the testimony of an individual. We have many testimonies this morning of individuals. Will you, like Rebecca, say, 